what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel and now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless of course your taste level is lacking okay and that's a personal problem y'all recently i was watching an episode of locked up abroad and i was like oh this is interesting and so spoiler alert nobody dies today however comma is still very interesting and i feel like we're due for like a breather where we tell a survivor story as opposed to somebody being sent to the upper room or you know the land down below they are doing construction outside and blue is snoring inside i don't think the mic is picking it up i did a little test but if you hear a little bit of something that's what it is now if y'all cannot tell i was good and comfortable before i started filming so i'm not gonna waste no time because mother is ready to get back to a state of relaxation without further ado let's get into the story of miss tina myers in 1995 26 year old tina myers is an adult entertainer down at a gentleman's club in orlando and tina had always wanted to be a dancer since she was a young child now granted this was not the type of dancing mama wanted to do it was the kind that was paying the bills okay so so this is what she was doing and not for nothing she still gets to live out her dancer fantasies on stage because she wasn't just you know in there swirling her hips like most girls oftentimes she put together a whole routine honey choreography behind the pole which makes her stand out a bit amongst the girls not only does it give her the opportunity to somewhat live out her dream it also makes her stand out amongst the rest of the girls but that is not the only thing that does also very known for her bad temper tina has been fired from most of the other clubs in Orlando for getting into altercations with other girls, bartenders, bouncers, and even some customers. She is very quick with her temper and her hand. Now, Tina's mother does not approve of the type of work that she does. And their, their relationship has always been sort of strained because her mother drinks a lot. And according to Tina, oftentimes prioritized men over her growing up. So they've never been close in their relationship. It's just not that, that good. Their troubled relationship actually caused Tina to leave home at the age of 14. She ran away, she slept at different friends' houses, and even on park benches a lot of times when she didn't have anywhere else to go. Very early in life, she learned how to unconventionally make money for herself. Honey, Tina is a hustler, okay? And dancing is not her only means of income. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes you could be in the club somewhere and then somebody slides up on you, you know, dancing, and they say something in your ear, and it's not not asking for your number okay instead is asking if you would like to buy a little piece of drug and no matter the drug they likely have it or have access to it well this was her on the nightlight scene okay and if she did not have what you needed she definitely could get her hands on it no matter the vice she buys all of her material from two peruvian guys and there's never any issues with the product nor the transaction business is good one night during one of her pickups the guys actually proposition her five thousand dollars cash to fly to Peru and bring back a package. Now Tina laughs in their faces because apparently they have taken her for a bit of a fool. $5,000 to risk her freedom was not what she was trying to do. And to be fair, this was in 1995 and $5,000 today is worth double that actually. So it would be like somebody offering you 10 k today. But even still, she was not at all impressed. They chat about it a bit more because she's asking questions just out of curiosity at this point. But as they're talking, she gets an idea. Tina tells the guys that she is not gonna do it however she is confident that she probably could convince a couple of the girls from the club to go they'll go for the 5k and then she can just collect a little finder's fee which the guys at this point they think is fair this kind of transaction this kind of business and deal is more tina speed because she knows already off the top of her head several girls who would likely jump at the opportunity to make $5,000 in a matter of four days. It was not at all a problem for her to find two girls that would agree to go. The problem comes the night before the two girls are to board their flights to Peru when they both change their minds and decide they're not gonna go. Tina meets up with the two guys, the Peruvian guys. They are not at all happy. The flights have been booked. The accommodations over in Peru have been made for two girls. The arrangement over in Peru has already been made for the drop. 
somebody has to go. Now, Tina knows that this is not her fault. She committed to finding the girls that will go and has no control over them dropping out the night before. However, she does remind them that she is willing to go, just not for 5,000 measly dollars. And of course, the guys, they have people that they answer to, so they're a bit desperate to make this work. However, they maintain that they do not have more than $5,000 cash to pay two people to go. Like, that's the budget, girl. And when they cannot agree on the cash aspect of it, they mutually agree that she'll go, but she'll be paid a half a kilo, which she estimates can bring her in about $25,000 cash. Now, if that's not what half a key is going for, now mind you, this was back in 1995, so it's probably around 50K on the streets. Now, I have been plenty of things in my day, but a drug dealer is not one. I'm just telling you what was told to me. Okay, the only problem now is that she needs to find another girl to go with her tonight. Now, Vanessa Payne is another girl that was really deep into the party scene, just like Tina. She approaches Vanessa and asks her if she wants to make a quick trip with her to Peru. And not only are all of her expenses going to be paid, she's going to be paid $5,000. Tina does tell her that they will be going to smuggle some things back, but reassures her that the trip is not at all dangerous, very low risk, that the people that she has been dealing with and working with, they're professionals. They know what they're doing and they'll make sure that everything goes off without a hitch. She should look at it like a free vacation. And with that pitch, Vanessa agrees. The two women arrive in Peru and their hotel room is beautiful. They check in, they can view the ocean. They're taking in the scenery and all of the amenities. Tina notices a card on the table that warns that if you're caught smuggling drugs out of the country, you can receive up to a life sentence. She reads the card, but she really doesn't take heed to it because her Peruvian brethren, they know what they're doing. She is so confident in her guys that she does not heed this warning at all. Carlos and Luis have also flown into Peru separately from the girls. They come to the girls' room a little bit later once they get settled in. They let them know that they will be picked up in a couple days for the transaction. But in the meantime, they can just go out and enjoy themselves and gives them a couple hundred dollars each so that they can, you know, afford all of the things. Things. But they make it very clear that under no circumstances are they to disclose to anyone why they are there. They actually advise them not to talk to any of the locals, anybody really. They spend the next couple days partying, hitting the local nightclubs, going and doing a bit of sightseeing, and finally comes the day for the transaction, which is also the same day that they'll be flying back to the States. Once their big day comes, Carlos and Louise arrive at the hotel to pick them up and they go for a very long, long drive out to this rural area. It's very dark. Tina is getting a bit anxious during the ride and it's a bit of an intimidating little situation, especially if this is your first time. And when they arrive at the location where the transaction will be made, they are greeted with a bunch of guys with heavy machine guns and they're yelling in Spanish. My girl Tina and Vanessa, they are not bilingual baby, so all of this is a bit much. Carlos and Louise tell them to get out of the car. The two women are then told to take off all of their clothes, everything but their underwear. Now, before this, they had not been told any of the details. So it's like, girl, what part of what part of the transaction is this? Like clothes off for what? But they do as they are instructed, girl, because nobody is trying to get shot over in Peru tonight. Now, once the two ladies are completely or mostly undressed, the guys pull out these bags of Coke no cola, okay? And they also pull out a bunch of duct tape and begin taping these bags around the women's arms, torsos, and thighs. They wouldn't be carrying anything back in their little suitcases or under their wigs, child. It's going on their bodies. They have no idea how much is being put on them. The guys are just packing on, it seems like, as much as they physically can. After they've been packed up, the guys put them in tight shapewear to help smooth out any of the lumps or anything that it just looks weird from you know the tape next the ladies are provided oversized sweatsuits to dress in and they're told to do different things like squat bend over pick something up jump up and down put their arms up different things to make sure that everything is secure and that if they have to do a normal thing like bend over and pick something up nothing looks out of place once they feel comfortable and confident that nothing looks suspicious about the girls each of them are given a pill to take and they're only told that 
it'll calm them down. They refuse to tell the women what the pill actually is. Tina takes her pill. Vanessa puts up a little bit of, you know, resistance because, girl, what is this? Okay, tell me what it is. But all they would tell her is that they needed her to be calm at the airport and this little pill would ensure that she is. Now she does need a bit of convincing to take it, but his little speech with the gun on his side, it gets the job done. She takes the pill. Once the pill kicks in, child, they are higher than Bobby Brown in the 90s, okay? Not just calm. A taxi is called for the two women to take them to the airport. The ride to the airport it is, is about as long as the ride to the location. It is a very, very long lengthy drive. On the way there, Tina tells Vanessa that they will walk in separately, go to separate counters, and they'll see each other on the plane. This way, if one of them gets caught, they don't automatically both get caught. She agrees, and child, they are both so high at the point in which they reach the airport that they can barely see. Tina gets to her counter, and she's checking in. The process feels normal enough until the lady asks her if she had packed her bags herself. And she says yes, because she doesn't want to bring any attention to herself. She's like, yeah, I pack my bag myself. The lady asks her if someone had given her anything to carry and she says no. And with that, she gets her boarding pass and she is told to have a good flight. As she is walking on toward her gate, she sees Vanessa with a couple of officers who have pulled her to the side, which of course is not a good sign. But as bad as it may sound, it's every man for themselves. This is the reason why they had split up in the first place. Just in case one of them got caught, they don't both automatically get caught. So she looks forward and she keeps on on her way. When she looks back again, they have now pulled Vanessa's shirt up and all they can see is this mask underneath shapewear and she is trying to convince them that she's pregnant she's rubbing her belly telling them that she is with child they're not going for it because girl your stomach is a bit more square than it is round mind you they tried to pack the girls to be as flat as possible so the stomach was not given pregnant tina's heart is racing and at this point she is trying her best to get to her gate as fast as she can without appearing to be trying to get out of there as fast as she can she tries her best to appear calm but it wouldn't matter anyway moments later two men put their hands on her shoulder turn her around and tell her to come with them at this point she does her best to put on her caring act right she's like unhand me you'll make me miss my flight what are you doing like she's really putting up a fight and they are not trying to hear it okay they know it's an act once they get her to the back room the first face she sees when she enters the room is vanessa who is sitting there looking at her very confused like what do we do now but neither of them say a word instead they begin removing tina's clothes Clothing. They take the bags of drugs off of both women, test it to confirm that it is in fact an illegal substance, and then they weigh it all. And up to this point, Tina nor Vanessa knew how much they had on them, but they knew they was up shit's creek without a paddle. When they weigh it all, it is a bit over 11 kilos altogether. They begin pressing the women about who was the supplier, who were they transporting it for, but to all of their questions, Tina is just saying she doesn't know. Because Tina says she ain't no snitch. Niche, okay and if she was she would have problems back where she lived when they refuse to give up any information they toss both of the girls in jail now i've never been in nobody's jail but i do know that some people's jails are better than others this jail right here it smelled terrible it is very dirty the cells are all cement with this thin tiny nasty 102 year old mattress that tina's had cockroaches they don't allow the girls to be cellmates they split them up because girl y'all not about to go in here whole hand through the process or talk and plot y'all and tina's tina's cellmate was this nice lady who had killed her husband now, i don't know what they do in the peruvian jails nowadays but back in 95 when this occurred they did not give you anything for free no soap no water no toothpaste no toothbrush no nothing everything had to be paid for no complimentary one ply toilet paper nothing the women who do not have money for water literally had to take their cups and fill them with the holes that fills the toilet bowl tina desperately needs money and the only person that she can think of to reach out to try to get to hell is the one person who has consistently let her down throughout her entire life at this point. She calls her mother and tells her that she is in prison in Peru and before she can go into any kind of detail or tell her anything really her mother says I know the U.S. Embassy gave me a phone call and she basically tells her daughter that she had gotten herself in this mess and will have to get herself out and hangs up the phone. Shaltina has no money for any of the things in jail. Let 
let alone money for legal representation. On the contrary though, Vanessa, her parents have gotten her a great lawyer. They've sent her more than enough money for everything she needs, which has made a significant difference in her experience over in jail. Granted, it's still jail, but apparently how much money you have really makes a difference in not only what you can afford from commissary, but how the guards and everyone treats you. A few months in, Vanessa is transferred to a different prison. And although they weren't that close in jail, Vanessa being sent away kind of does make Tina feel a little more alone. And about five months into being there, Tina finally receives her prison sentence. Six and a half years for the crime that she had committed. At this point, she pretty much accepts her fate and decides to try to, you know, just learn how to make it on the inside. Christmas Eve rolls around and it is her very first Christmas inside of prison, but she figures she'll make the best of it. She had gotten her hands on this little container of perfume and apparently, you know, I ain't never drank no perfume, but I heard from her that it is like 100% alcohol or like really high percentage of alcohol. So she drinks that down, throws caution to the wind, baby. Forget the rest of the chemicals. What I got to lose. She mixes it in a bit of juice, I believe, and chugs it down. It gives her almost an instant buzz. Buzz is not the word. She was heavily intoxicated. Miss Thing is in her cell, enjoying her holiday as best she can, when all of a sudden she has a lot of commotion coming from the front of the prison. She goes to check it out, and the girls are out there rioting, taking off their clothes and setting things on fire, okay? They're having a little Christmas mayhem if you will. Tina has no idea what's going on or why, and she does not want to be involved in any of it. Instead, she makes her way to the back of the prison so she can continue on with her little celebration. But once she gets back there, she notices that the guards that usually watch have all gone to the front. Everybody has gone to the front and left the back completely unsupervised. With this, she decides to seize the opportunity. She instantly begins digging a hole so that she can climb underneath the fence and she's having to dig with her bare hands, okay? Nails and dirt. Once she makes her way through there, there is this wall that she now has to climb. But fortunately for her, there are a bit of materials there for her to stack up against the wall to a certain point and she would just have to depend on her determination and or the liquor to aid her in doing the rest, which would be climb up to the top. She manages to do so, but then she sees her next hurdle. There below her are houses, like rooftops, but between where she stands and the rooftop, there is about a distance of six feet where she would have to leap and hope she makes it. As she is trying to strategize, she sees a woman in one of the windows from the houses looking up at her and she puts her finger to her lips to ask her not to tell, but then the woman starts screaming her head off. She starts shouting, Gringa, baby, Gringa on the loose. Tina looks behind her and one of the guards is back. And not only is he back, he is aiming a rifle at her. After the first couple shots miss her, she knows she has to jump. She has no time. So she leaps onto the closest house and falls right through the ceiling. When she regains consciousness, she's in a very dark room. The house is very quiet and she doesn't know how long she's been out for, but obviously nobody's seen her. She's been laying here undisturbed all this time. So at this point, Point, she decides instead of trying to go downstairs and risking somebody being in the house she would just jump out of the window she does so landing on concrete but this time but this time she would not be so lucky with her fall at first it feels as though her foot has fallen asleep but she has not passed out she's like girl like it hasn't been long enough for my foot to have fallen asleep what's going on when she looks down all she sees is bones protruding from the lower part of her leg people from the neighboring houses begin to come out and as they gather around her in the street she's begging them not to call the police now they think it's this was a burglar okay that she was attempting to burglarize his house and make it out the window so they called the police she's rushed to the hospital her leg is repositioned put into a brace and her wound is cleaned out all without pain medication tina is then shackled to her bed so she can lay there and heal and she is told that unless she has the money she will not be given antibiotics nor pain medicine they keep her chained there to that bed for nearly a month 
coming in every other day to painfully clean out her wound without any type of pain relief. Then one day a nurse comes in and tells her that she is at risk of getting gangrene. And if this infection spreads and that happens, she will likely die. And to avoid this happening, they have now scheduled her for an amputation that will happen the following day. Now, mama does not want them to take her leg. She cries and she begs them not to, but the nurse insists that there is no other way. Thinking about the labor of the doctor alone, how is that cheaper than giving the girl pain medication and antibiotics? I don't know, but this is what they were going with. Once she is left alone, she attempts to move the bed as close to the window as she can get it so she could just hurl her body out of it. Obviously, if they didn't give her pain medication before, they would not be giving her pain medication after. She tries her best to inch her bed toward the window or get loose, but it's to no avail. The following day she wakes up from a deep sleep and instantly the first thing on her mind is her leg. She immediately snatches the covers back and to her surprise she still has them both. She also finds out that a nice couple had heard about her story and had come by and offered to cover all of her medical expenses and wanted to first pay for of course the antibiotics and the pain medication so now she doesn't need to get the amputation. The couple comes in and they speak with her briefly. They tell her that they had heard her story at church, give her a pink Bible, tell her that they were praying for her and she has the opportunity to thank them for, you know, them covering her medical expenses. They also tell her that they'll come back and visit her, but they do not. After this day, she never sees them again. With the antibiotics and the pain medication and a little more proper care, she is able to make a good enough recovery to return to the prison two weeks later. The inmates cheer her on as she comes back in to them she's like a hero she is like a living legend when she makes it back to her cell she is notified that she has mail to pick up and when she goes to pick up her mail she has several packages things like toiletries snacks pretty much any and everything that she would need had all been sent to her all from her mom her mother had included a letter expressing to her that she was sorry that she waited so late to support her she expresses her love for her daughter and apologizes for all of her shortcomings and of course how she had initially reacted to the news and for the first time in her life Tina feels like her mother has come through for her it couldn't have been a better time now at this point because she had tried to escape and all of that and she have no money she knows that it is going to be a while before she leaves prison she is going to have to serve out her sentence especially after this stunt so she makes the best of it she completely submerges herself into the culture she learns the language and in four months is able to speak Spanish fluently to years into her sentence, an American pastor who had opened up a church in Peru begins visiting the Peruvian prison. Tina speaks with him often and one day he tells her that he had been working on possibly having her parole expedited. Now he cannot make any promises but he feels that there is a very good chance that she will be paroled. He also tells her while she is on parole he'll provide her with a job where she can make money and support herself until she can return to the States. Now Miss Tina don't want to get her hopes up but the pastor ends up coming through on his promise. He is able to vouch for her and assist her in getting released on parole. The very first thing she does when she makes it out of prison is look for the couple that had paid for her medical expenses and nobody knows who they are. No one can help her get in contact with them and she cannot find them. While out on parole, the job that the pastor had for her was to teach local kids how to speak English. It would be no cost to their parents, but he of course, through the church, paid her for her lessons to the children. And he also had other little odd jobs around the church that he's able to employ her with. In 2003, she is able to return to the US nearly eight years after she had arrived in Peru for that life-changing trip. According to Tina, Vanessa had, with the help of her lawyer, been released way earlier than her and had escaped Peru and had come back to the U.S. before serving out her parole. Now, in addition to their sentencing, they both were required to pay fines. Well, because Vanessa had skipped the country before paying her fines or without paying her fines, Tina says that they packed Vanessa's fines onto her, which made her time over in Peru longer because she had to stay there 
there and work until she had paid off everything. Now, when Tina gets home, she mends her relationship with her mother and their relationship is better than it's ever been. The two of them remained very close until her mother passed away. And Tina also went on to raise three children of her own. We wish Tina well, child. She did the crime and my girl also did the time. And then she bounced back. Let me know your thoughts on the case. I want to know what you would have done. How much would it have taken you to go over there and try to risk your freedom? Okay, I, I can't do it. Although I do feel like I researched one prison that was kind of, you know, didn't sound that bad. I'm pretty sure that was like Australia. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Like the video before you leave, please. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. If this is not your first time here, and if it's your first time here, ciao. <laughs> Welcome to Gas. <laughs> Such is life. I just might as well do the whole thing over. Okay, 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 okay. And I don't think the mic is picking any, any. I can't talk to me. This video is gonna be so hard to edit, my goodness. In 1996, she was 26, it was 95. Look at me already messing up. Cause I feel like my eyebrows are burning, like right above. It's like red and bumpy. Oh my goodness, why am I dying on camera? This video is gonna be so hard to edit, my goodness. Jesus, take the wheel. Long drive out to this rural area. I said it right. I've been reading more books lately, girl. I feel like that might have something to do with it. They then put them in. Oh, my little nickel just jumped around. Y'all, listen to my son back there. He uses me filming as like live ASMR. And even when I'm on the phone talking, he'll snore like this. Like, my baby finds my voice to be relaxing, baby. Once I get to talking for a long time, he just gets to snoring, baby. And if this inspe inspection, and if this infection, come on, girl, we almost done, okay?